This is my city, my home. It might be your city, or like yours, where law-abiding citizens go about their business of working and providing good homes for their loved ones, and where destructive forces of crime and evil are also at work. In one way or another, we're all enmeshed by crime. We're either on the side of law and order or against it. We're all in the battle between good and evil. Kennedy speaking. Oh, hello, Walt. I was just leaving. I'm glad I caught you, Craig. I'm tied up at Acme Studios, stage nine. How about meeting me here for lunch instead of my office, huh? Well, all right, Walt. What are you trying to do, get a job as a movie actor? Not guilty. The editor asked me to get an exclusive interview with Karen Day. What? Walter Jameson writing interviews with movie stars? Well, I couldn't refuse my editor. First, I thought it'd be kind of dull, but uh, I'll take on a lot of this work. Karen Day's not hard to look at. She's what? Oh. I see. Well, take a little advice from Uncle Craig. I've seen Karen Day on the screen. Yes, Uncle Craig. I assure you it'll be strictly business. Now, how about meeting me over here? Quiet. Quiet on the stage, please. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Hold on a moment, Craig. They're getting ready to shoot a scene. We've rehearsed this enough. You all know your lines and business. I hope. Don't waste any more time, Martin. Other than close up to the girls, it's the last scene we have to shoot. I'm not wasting any time, Mr. Wilde. This is the best picture I ever directed, and consequently, the best picture you ever produced. Will you make the scene? <coughs> Here we go. Quiet. Roll. Scene 372, take one. Action. To your happiness, Elizabeth. To you and... I told you what I'd do the next time I caught you with my wife. Charles, you don't understand. You're making a mistake, Charlie. I'm no fool. Oh, Charles, the toast was to Elizabeth and you. Cut. We'll do it once more. Spencer, you were certainly chewing up the scenery. Hello, Craig. I can talk now. How about... <laughs> Spencer's really been shot. He's dead. Craig, the leading man has been killed. Right. This story will give you the best front page you've had in a long time, boss. And don't forget the bonus check. Phone your paper? Uh-huh. I wish you'd held it up for a while. This publicity won't do the picture any good. On the contrary, the public will flock to the theaters to see it. It's a terrible thing. A good friend of mine will be along any minute. Don't worry. He'll help Inspector Burke clean this up like that. Uh, who is this friend? Craig Kennedy. <sighs> That's good. Mr. Jameson. You're with one of the big dailies, aren't you? Uh, yeah, the Evening Star. Why? Could you, um... Be interested in some side information on this little drama? Oh, I, uh, I could be interested. Oh, well, thanks, officer. I can find Mr. Jameson myself. Craig! Don't you want to hear what I have to say? Oh, you bet I do. Keep it on ice for a moment, will you, honey? Have any trouble getting by the studio police? I used your name, Walt. Huh? They let me in anyway. <clears throat> Is Inspector Burke on the case? Yeah, he's over on the set. What were you looking at, Craig? A very attractive blonde. She had her eyes riveted on you, Walt. Oh, that would be Margaret White. Plays second lead in the picture. Reminds me, she has some information. Might make a good story, huh? Sure, sure. Honestly, it's strictly business. She said that... Yes? Oh, well, you wouldn't believe me anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't. <laughs> all right, all right, folks. Now, everybody keep calm. Now, see here, Captain Dirk. Let's get this over with as soon as possible. I have a picture to make. I'm not a captain. I'm an inspector. 
My name isn't Dirk, it's Burke. I got a murder mystery on my hands, Mr. Wilde, which is just as important to me as your picture is to you. Oh, hello, Kennedy. Glad to see you. Same here, Inspector. However, I'm only an interested spectator. I was meeting Jameson here. Hmm, interested spectator, huh? Mm. Not with me on the job. I'm putting you to work. Her professional name was Judy Lane. Happened about five years ago, huh? You'll find it all in your newspaper files. I seem to remember the name. Mr. Jameson, when uh, you write this story, don't forget to give me a build-up and get my name correct. Hmm. Right through the chest. Yes. I understand a scene was being made when this happened. Who fired the shot? Uh, my name is Arnold. I fired the shot. Oh? The inspector has a gun. I, I wouldn't let it out of my possession until he got here. Wouldn't let it out of your possession, Mr. Arnold? Why not? Because I I'm smart enough to know that this looks bad for me. The, the prop man loaded it and gave it to me. M Mr. Kennedy, no I... No cause to be alarmed, Mr. Arnold. We'll get to the bottom of this. Hey, the serial numbers have been filed off this gun. Where's the prop man? I'll get him. What'd you say your name is? Bob Farrell. I was Tom Spencer's stand-in. Were you on the set when this happened? Yes, sir. I was standing back by the camera. I see. Well, we'll get a complete story from everybody in just a few minutes. Where's that prop man? There's the prop man. Oh. Kim. Did you load this gun for the scene? Yes, sir, I did. Take a good look at it. Sure it's yours? Yeah, it's mine, all right. Police have a record of it? No, sir. The law says you have to register all guns. Well, the numbers were filed off it. It was that way when I bought it. Makes no difference. You should have come in to see us about it. How long have you had it? Well, about nine years. I can vouch for Kemp. He's been a faithful employee of mine for a long time. Oh, we'll get to that later. All right, everybody, we can relax a moment. I want to talk with the rest of the crew. Dr. Burke was looking for you. Thank you. Coming, Mr. Wilde? Oh, oh yes, of course. of course. Well, Karen, now that Spencer's dead, who's going to slide you into leading parts? Just what do you mean by that? I was doing all right until Spencer fell for that $1.89 charm of yours. How dare you? Oh, stop. It's common gossip you were out to marry him. I also heard some gossip. You wanted to marry him. That's enough, Margaret. Don't give me orders, Martin. I said that's enough. You know, Martin, you and I ought to be on the same team. You were in love with Karen, and Spencer beat your time. 
I'm sorry you had to be subjected to that, Karen. Oh, Frank, this whole thing is horrible. Well, now, listen, Karen, you mustn't let this thing throw you. I'll do everything in the world I can to help you. Why, you know that I've always, well, I sort of had some great plans for us. But uh, Spencer swept you off your feet. Everybody over here, please. We'll have a two-hour break for lunch. You can all go over the commissary if you want, but don't try to leave the lot. I think I'll go over to headquarters with this. I'll be in my lap. Drop you off? No, thanks. I have my car. Be seeing you. Walt, check the files in your newspaper morgue on Judy Lane, the actress Margaret White told you about. Okay, and I'll meet you in the lab. In about an hour. That judo cut knew how to use it viciously. You'll show himself before we're through with this case. That's everything we have on Judy Lane. Uh -huh. Well, it's sufficient. Her real name was Judy Kemp. The prop man's daughter. She was an actress, married to Thomas Spencer. Spencer divorced her and she committed suicide. Margaret White told me that the girl's father swore revenge. Of course, you won't find that in the files. Hardly. She also said that Spencer wasn't a very nice guy. A jealous woman can do a lot of talking, Walt. Oh, what do you mean by jealous? On the way out of the studio, I stopped for a little chat with the gateman. And? I learned that Margaret White is jealous of Karen Day, for more reasons than one. Well, keep talking, Uncle Craig. Margaret was in love with Thomas Spencer, and for a while it looked like she had him on the way to the altar. That is, until Karen made an appearance. Then Spencer's sweet thoughts of love turned from Margaret to Karen, eh? I must admit that's reason enough to burn a lady who's practically married, but uh, you said more reasons than one? Margaret was set to do the lead in this picture opposite Spencer. Then Spencer talked the producer into giving the part to Karen. And Margaret had to step down to second billing, huh? Craig, could she have put a real bullet in that gun? It seems quite a few people could have done that, Walt. Ballistics say that gun fired the bullet that killed Spencer. Here's a blow up with the death bullet. And one of the test bullets. Hmm. The markings are identical. I see your boys didn't uh, work on the filed serial numbers. Didn't give them time. I'll see what I can do. These shells were in the gun. Five unfired blanks. The sixth was a real bullet. Any fingerprints on the shells? No. Oh, we're dealing with a clever killer. Yes, but criminals always make mistakes, Walt. How about fingerprints on this gun, Inspector? Save your energy. We got clear impressions of Arnold's fingers and the director's, that's all. Hey. Maybe we're missing a bet on that fella Arnold. Maybe he thought he should have had the lead in the picture. Stop trying to be a detective, Jameson. When we get the killer, we'll tell you, and you can print it all over your little newspaper. Hmm. Hmm, what? These numbers were filed off recently, Inspector. So? The prop man said they were filed off when he bought the gun. Nine years ago. Yeah, that's right. You know, the more I think of this case, the more I add two and two to get the answer. Prop man. He had the motive and the opportunity. Let's get over to stage nine and see what we can dig out of him. Kennedy speaking. Yes. Yes, he's here. Your office. Yeah, what is it? What's that? Okay, I'm on my way. Acme Studios phone headquarters. Somebody tried to kill the prop man. I have the studio hospital take care of him. Now, Mr. Kemp, tell us exactly what happened. I was over behind my property box. Somebody threw that knife at me. I 
turned as quickly as I could, but I, I couldn't see anyone. You say you turned? Yes, sir. But this knife hit the front of your body. You wouldn't have to turn to see who it was. When the knife struck me, it turned me around. It's not a very bad wound. You couldn't have stabbed yourself to throw us off the track. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you deny you hated Spencer? So you found out about my daughter. Yes, I hated him. But I didn't kill him. We'll let the evidence decide that, Mr. Kemp. Not much use looking for prints on that knife. It's been handled by too many people. Yes. And generally speaking, Inspector, people who throw knives are thoughtful enough to wear gloves. Right. Let's replay the murder scene, Inspector. Okay, do we need the crew for that? No, no, dismiss everyone but Kemp. Call for you, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. Hello? Yes, yes, this is Kennedy. Yes, yes. How much? Oh. Thank you. Look here, Mr. Kennedy. This thing is beginning to look pretty bad for me. Is it? Why, Mr. Arnold? I don't have to be a detective to see that the finger of suspicion points to me. Please calm yourself, Mr. Arnold. You're attracting suspicion to yourself. Mr. Wilde. Yes? That was a very interesting phone conversation I just received. It was your insurance company. So? I did a bit of checking. You insured Thomas Spencer's life for $250,000. The policy names you as beneficiary. Well, what of it? I always insure my cast. Every producer does. I'm not talking about cast insurance. I'm talking about the individual policy on Thomas Spencer. That doesn't prove that I killed him. Mr. Wilde, your pictures with Spencer haven't been making money. You tried to break his contract, but he forced you to go on with it. Well, that may be true. Now, prove that I killed him. I'm going to prove quite a few things. Could we reenact the scene exactly as it was played when Spencer was shot? Well, yes, of course. Everybody in their original positions, please. Who's going to take Spencer's part? We can use Farrell to stand in. Well, I... Go ahead, Farrell. It's perfectly safe. What's the matter, Mr. Farrell? Well, what I mean is, well, there's, there's nothing in the Gill rules that says that I have to stand in for a dead man. All right, Mr. Farrell, you're excused. Stand behind the camera. I'll take his place, Mr. Martin. Do you want the dialogue, Mr. Kennedy? Well, yes, yes, please, and explain the action to me. Yes. Spencer is seated at that table. The two ladies are in their regular position as they are now. Arnold, why, he comes in that door to the right. You raise your glass for a toast. Mm -hmm. Then you direct your line to Karen. And you say, to your happiness, Elizabeth, to you and to your... And you're checked by the sudden entrance of Arnold, who points a gun at you and says, I told you what I'd do if I ever caught you with my wife again. And then I say to Arnold, Charles, you don't understand. And then I say, I'm no fool, and fire the gun. And after you're shot, I cry out to Arnold, oh, Charles, the toast was for Elizabeth and you. That's the cut, Mr. Kennedy. Got it? I think so. Yes. Now, uh, when I call action, you start the toast. Thank you. Put something into this, you might get an acting contract. This is hardly the time for jokes. I'll buy that, Karen. Go on, please, and don't miss any of the details. Do you want me to use the same gun for this? Yes. Will you give him the gun, Inspector, please? OK, Kennedy. Just 
a moment, Mr. Arnold. Why did you put the gun on the table? Were you supposed to find it there in the story? No, Mr. Martin had been showing me how to play the scene. He put it there. Uh, that's right, Mr. Kennedy. How did the gun get into your hands? The property man gave it to Mr. Arnold, loaded and ready for the scene. I took it from Mr. Arnold to show him how the scene should be played. Thanks, Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. Can we go on with the scene? Oh, of course. Are you ready, Mr. Arnold? Uh, yes. Action. To your happiness, Elizabeth. To you and to... I told you what I'd do the next time I caught you with my wife. Oh, Charles, you don't understand! You're making a mistake, Charlie. I'm no fool. Oh, Charles. The toast was to Elizabeth and you. Cut! That was an Academy Award winner, Mr. Kennedy. You're a quick study. Quiet, Miss White. Now, what did we prove? Except that the great criminologist has a streak of ham in him. I consider that a compliment, Mr. Wilde. This is an unusual case, ladies and gentlemen. We have several motives to consider. Jealousy is always a dangerous motive. Perhaps a woman cast aside. And let's not forget ambition. Greed would cause a man to murder. Also, hatred and revenge. Like all criminals, the killer made several mistakes. The prop man's gun wasn't used to kill Spencer. The gun used was an almost perfect substitute. But the killer wasn't quite clever enough. Otherwise, there'd have been more fingerprints than those of Martin and Arnold on the murder weapon. And Kennedy found out that the gun Arnold used had the serial numbers filed off recently. Kent, the prop man, said that the numbers had been filed off for over nine years. It's the truth, so help me. You were right about that, Mr. Kemp. We were able to bring the numbers to the surface. With all that evidence, Mr. Kennedy, why did you make us replay the last scene? To prove definitely who switched guns, Miss White. What did you do with the prop gun, Mr. Martin? I don't know what you're talking about. Martin, you were jealous of Spencer. You set up his murder to keep him from marrying Karen Day. This is a real gun, Kennedy. And it's not loaded with blanks. Turk Kennedy! <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, yes? I... Well, there's something I gotta tell you. Yes, I know. You stabbed yourself. But where did you learn that judo cut? What? You knew it all the time? Yes. Well, I... I was scared to death. Everything pointed at me. If you don't need an alibi, Kemp, don't ever try to build one. It's too dangerous. Thanks, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Martin is the real killer. You ought to learn shorthand, sweetheart. I'll wait you get it all down. The wall. Hmm? If that's your newspaper you're phoning, be sure to get my name correctly, in case you forget. Axridge, 0041. <clears throat> that reminds me, Walt. Weren't you going to interview uh, Karen Day? Uh, no, Uncle Craig, I'm taking your advice. I might fall in love with her, and falling in love with Karen Day isn't healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and so ends the case of murder on stage nine.